Hi there. I'm Matt with Kick15T, and we are going to talk about formatting stuff in the Confluence Editor. So first we'll start with some standard text formatting, just look at sort of all the little changes we can make. We'll talk a bit about text colors and how those can impact our page. We'll cover lists and how we can take our text and make it into followable lists. We'll look at text alignment, how we can sort of position our text to make it look better on the page. We'll look at page layouts that we can use to break up the content of our page to help it read better and help people to find what they need. Then we'll talk about rich content, like adding images or videos, maybe some internal or external links. We'll talk about adding task lists and at mentions. And then finally, we'll explore just making things more fun with emoji. So here I am in the Confluence Editor, and I have a bunch of content here. But I want to make certain bits of content stand out so that people who are reading it can see what's really, really important to them. And so to do that, I can use some formatting. So let's start with some really basic formatting. So the first option we have is to bold the text. And this is great if you want to have something stand out on the page. I would say bolding might be the most noticeable way to format something, maybe. Also, if you hover over this, you can see the keyboard shortcut for that particular type of formatting. You can also use italics, another great way to highlight something. Or if you hit the more formatting button here, you see even more options. So underline can also be a great way to highlight something that someone should be noticing. Most organizations have guidelines on whether you should use bold, italics, or underline, and when you should use each. So maybe check into that. There's also strike through which is handy if you have content that's still important, but maybe that's been superseded by another bit of content. Or maybe you just want to keep it around just in case. There's also code formatting, which is great for when you drop a single line of code onto a page. It formats it really well for readability. Or you could use the code snippet macro if you have multiple lines of code, and it even adds syntax highlighting. And then also, if you just want to get rid of all of the formatting, you can use the clear formatting option. This is great if you want to just start with a clean slate, or maybe you copied the content from somewhere else and you don't want the formatting anymore. You can just use this option and just have some beautiful, crisp, unformatted text. Also, really quick, you can change the color of text, which is great if you want to distinguish between different elements on the page, maybe. Just don't rely on it too much because it won't be helpful for people with visual impairments. Now, of course, in our useful content, we have lists. Maybe it's lists of information, or maybe it's a set of steps that people need to complete. Lists are extremely important in your content, especially to help people as they try to skim through to find the thing they're looking for. You can highlight that content, and you can select one of the list options from above. The next thing we can do here is adjust the alignment of our text. So by default, text is left aligned, which works for a lot of different text. But maybe you have an element like uh, a quote, for example, and you want to center that. You can go up to the text alignment menu here and pick a different one. Ah, that's centered. Beautiful. Now, the very best Confluence pages make it easy for people to find what they're looking for. And sometimes you just need to break up your text a little bit so visually people can find the different pieces that you're highlighting. So to do this, you can use a layout. I'm going to hit the layouts button here, and that drops in a two column layout option. But I can use the menu along the bottom to pick from different options, depending on what we're looking for. And I can add multiple layouts. So maybe I want to have a three column layout and then a two column layout underneath that. And then maybe I want to have just a single block of text under that and, and so on and so forth. This is a great way to change up the very basic structure of the page. Also, maybe you're thinking, okay, I do want to have three columns, but there's just not enough room here for everything I want to put in. You can use the go wide button here to expand the width of just that layout so that it fills the entire page. Now, maybe you're thinking your entire page needs to be a little wider. Remember, you can also adjust the width of that. Now, of course, you're not just going to work with text in Confluence because the most interesting pages often have visual elements that helps people learn. So for example, we might want to add an image. Now, you can drag and drop an image directly into Confluence, or you can select it from your device. Here, you can resize it using these bars along the side to get it just the way we want it. We can also add alt text here, which is a great description of the image, as well as it's useful for people with visual impairments. Also, if you ever want to update an image, you can upload a file with the same name as the original image, and it replaces that image and creates a new version of it in Confluence. 
pretty cool. And of course, sometimes we want to bring in content from outside of our page. So for example, I can drag in this YouTube link and it drops right into the page and people can actually see a preview of the video and watch it directly on the page. I can also add links to the page. And there's a few different types in Confluence. The first type of links is an external link. So you have a URL for a website and you can select some text in Confluence and put the link on that, or you can just drop the URL right on the page. Very simple. Then there's internal links in Confluence, which lets you do even more. When adding an internal link, you can select from any recently viewed pages, or you can use a search box to find any page in Confluence that you want to link to. I can also control the way the link displays. So by default, it displays inline, so just the name of the page. But I could choose to just show the URL, I could show a card with the page information on it, or I could display an embed and have the entire page actually embedded in my Confluence page, which is just like crazy. I can also make the content a little bit more actionable by creating action items. So I can select some text, turn it into an action item, and then this is a great place to use an app mention to bring in a colleague so they know, hey, this is my thing to do. And last but not least, you can put a smile on someone's face or on their page by adding an emoji. You can hit the emoji button here and pick one out. Maybe I'm gonna put a happy little tree there. Oh, look at that one. That's so cute. And there you have it. We have a really nicely formatted page now. We used some standard text formatting and colors. We did some text alignment and page layouts. We applied some rich content like images and links. And of course, we dropped an emoji in there. Also, quick side note, we noticed that only 7% of the people who watch our videos actually subscribe, which means there's like 90, 3% of people who might miss a new video, a helpful resource that we put out there. So hit that subscribe link so that you can keep getting our new videos as we create them because we're creating them for you. This is just formatting content in Confluence. There is so much more you can do. So jump into another video in this course as we continue to explore using the Confluence editor to share what you do best.